Let's have a look at maximizing vitreous tiles. I bought these colors just recently specifically to make a lovely flower pot and I thought oh maybe um, people would like to know a little bit more about these because they're often cheap and uh, they're often poo-pooed because some of them are pitted like these which means the grout will potentially get into holes I don't bother about them I don't let it worry me um, unless there's great big blobs uh, they're generally used for swimming pools, so not designed really to be cut up into various shapes. So that does present some problems. Now, vitreous tiles come in pitted, which means it's got little holes all over the spot. And that's where the grout might um, lodge itself into. You get that with stained glass as well. Uh, in some stained glasses, not all stained glasses. Um, it also comes in unpitted, which is very smooth and can be shined up and also the smooth ones can have a beautiful um, iridescent finish to them so I use a lot of them so everything you see uh, when you look at my posts have a look at which ones are actually vitreous tiles and you'll find that more often than not it's probably at least 80% so with these really lovely big ones um, these are 30 mmms or mmms or one and a quarter inches depending on how you think or three centimeters as opposed to our the standard ones which are 20 millimeters or two centimeters three quarters of an inch thereabouts so i wanted to do uh, simple flowers and more luxurious flowers with lots of petals and just make it a completely bright bright flower pot in which I'm going to put something that's mostly greenery and drapery uh, but not with a lot of flowers I just wanted um, a nice bright pot for that type of plant so let's have a look at how do we make these flowers that have at least nine or ten petals from these great tiles now the other thing about vitreous tiles, uh, they can become brittle. Sometimes you'll get a brittle batch and sometimes you won't. I find that it's sort of luck of the draw, it doesn't matter because you know, they're, a, they're a reasonable price so you will lose a couple. Here I lost a couple of the orange ones but I just turned it into a smaller flower. So that's just going to work super well. So we get one of these um, tiles here and I will demonstrate this. And we chop it in half then we do a couple of these in the bottom we start to do the shaping around the edge here and then really make it curve to end up with something like that which you may or may not want to sand off to make the edges smoother so all of these are unsanded this is the only sanded one and as you can see from a distance there's pretty much not much difference so it's really up to you about the finish you want i like this sort of finish because it's more rustic um, and suits the tile as well if they were really bright shiny ones like the these gorgeous things i would probably sand them off smoother but then um, it really depends on the look and feel you want when you're done okay so let's get into the uh, slicing and dicing and construction of this flower. Okay, we've got our wheel nippers at the ready, all nicely uh, ready to go and start chopping away. I won't demonstrate cutting a tile in half, that would be terribly insulting to you. Um, so you cut it in half and then the next bit is to look at that half piece I'll take it up really nice and close and you can see this is about halfway and this is almost halfway. So I've drawn a line so you can see what I'm going to cut. So what that does is give a slight keystone effect to get a nice round circle of flowers without too many um, cumbersome or uh, big gaps that you don't really want with your flowers. So we're just going to nip those triangles off. And because of the, the tiles, you might need to give an extra little nip here and there. 
depending on what how the uh, background is is cutting and then you end up with this shape see how I've got just those bottom bits done with just almost a point but not quite so this will give a nice finish to the, the flower or the petal so once we've got that we want to take off the two top corners to start our uh, shaping for the circle once you get a hang of this then um, you'll just be able to make them anyway but this is how I got started with mine and after a while it just becomes uh, so much easier so we'll chop those little bits off so two little triangles chopped off pretty easy and now what I do is cut off all the little corners the smallest little cut you can to get the corners off so it ends up being round so I just think okay each point I'm going to chop off so chopping away one there one there there and there but I happen to get a little point on the end there I'm going to nip that one away as well because that doesn't add to my circle or my nice rounded edge edge And then you end up with a petal. But I think I might want this petal with a little bit less on the bottom here. So I'm going to give it an extra little nip in there and hope it doesn't break. And that's all I really need. If I want to grind it or use the sanding pad to make this top edge smooth, this is the time you would do that. But that's only if you want to do that. Make sure your sanding block is wet because um, it will sand your glass much easier whilst it's wet. It prefers to be wet sanded. And then you just have your petal all ready to pop into your flower. And there you have it. So I'll go and finish off these flowers and then show you the next step. I'm going to stick them all on a pot so you can see what they're going to look like. Okay, now we've done the lovely little yellow flower here and you can see the, the gaps are pretty good. It's going to look great with black grout. This is just uh, stiffened felt from a local craft shop, which is a great little work board, but also terrific if you want to see what colour uh, grout is going to have an impact on your design. Um, I'll just straighten up this one here before I get stuck into the sticky tape. Now I use sticky tape a lot because I've got um, stiff hands and sticking all of these things on one at a time is, is an absolute nightmare. So I just use broad sticky tape or face tape. Some people use contact but I'm, I'm a deadly with the contact. So I'll, I will just cover all of these with sticky tape and hopefully they don't move too much. Give it a little pat down. Do another big bit. Overlaying it. I also use this to help me when I'm gluing it to my surface, which is really helpful when, when you're doing 3D work. Um, but also I use glue, glue that is non-slumping, which means it's perfect for vertical surfaces. So on my flower pot, it's going to make my life a whole lot easier. And of course, I leave it there until the glue is almost dry or cured, but not fully cured, uh, because I'm a, a silicon user, and it's much easier to, to clean silicon before it's completely dry. Okay, so now we can see that I've got myself a nice motif of flowers. On my sticky tape so all I then need to do is if I'm worried that it's too big it might um, split through the middle I'll just do a cross section on there just for added strength then I cut off the excess tape peel it off how fabulous is that and then I just cut around and get all the excess off 
Now because it is 3D, 3D stuff takes a bit longer because you wait for things to dry. Um, that's if you're doing uh, complex patterns. If you're just laying tiles one after the other, not such a big worry. Um, but I like to get my pattern on and smooth down really well before I do the background. Um, and I think in this case, I'm going to do a nice either dark blue or dark green background. Um, I could use my very favorite tiles that are called Ken. I use lots of these, it's my favorite color. So I thought that would really make it pop. Okay, so once I get all that excess off, it's ready to, to roughly plonk onto my pot. Just admire it for a moment. Then I'll go get my pot. Okay, now we've got pot at the ready. I've done uh, the bottom edge and the top edge, vice versa. This is the bottom, this is the top. So I've made the tiles flush with, with each so that I can fill in the grout and it'll be mostly straight and flat across there. It's going to be sealed twice on the outside to help protect uh, the pot on the outside, but also not let it dry out too much. So then we have our lovely motif here, and I can just place that where I want it to go on the pot. So you can see it's going to look pretty fabulous. I can change it around. I could um, also cut these up and then just place single flowers where I wanted them to go. But I like this sort of random random design with, uh, it'll have a few green leaves around and I'll have a perfect pot. When it's done, I shall post it onto my page so you can see how terrific it looks. And I might even have it planted up by then. So I hope this gives you some wonderful ideas about a pot. But before I say uh, farewell, um, just a little tip. The top of the pot is flat or like straight sides like this so you don't need to treat your tiles in any way you can stick them on i quite like to cut my square tiles in half and stick them around on the bottom one we've got a surface that goes uh, like that so what i do is very gently keystone these bottom ones to get a, a terrific fit for, with the right amount of gap in here so i haven't got weird triangular spaces that need to be filled with grout so all that means is it's a half keystone nip, the smallest one I can make, um, and then with a little bit of a rubber dub. So on every single tile, I just take a very, the smallest diagonal bit off. And that makes all the difference to this curved surface so that it makes, takes up for it getting thinner and thinner as you go along and as you can see, these gaps are pretty fabulous and all nice and straight. I'll probably do that for my background tiles if I have them in straight lines. I hope you uh, enjoyed or looking forward to making a, a gorgeous pot of beautiful flowers and really get stuck into these wonderful big 30 centimetre tiles. I'm really thrilled I bought them. Uh, it's a recent purchase because they're just working so well for these uh, multicoloured flowers. How awesome.